I'm John Mew, an orthodontist, and I was treating Stanley, who is on my left, and Julie, his mother. I was treating his younger sister when his mother casually mentioned to me at some point that um, Stan, who I'd never met, was going to have to have an operation because he had an impacted canine tooth. And that set my mind clicking because I have been able to treat quite a few people who had impacted canines without surgery. So I just said to Julie, perhaps I can have a look at him because I might be able to treat him without surgery. And so I suggested that she brought him in, I did. And I think even you were really quite surprised that it might even be possible. Yeah, but um, Stanley was 13 at the time, and he'd only just had this impacted canine diagnosed. Um, I looked at the x-rays, and the canine, instead of coming down where it should do in the corner of the mouth, had for some reason grown forward and was stuck behind what we call the upper central teeth. Okay, so I'll start at the beginning um, when I was uh, the, recommended by my dentist to see an orthodontist because I had this um, tooth growing up here uh, and it was blocked by a baby tooth that wouldn't come down. Um, we went to um, various orthodontists, uh, NHS and private, and both suggested this approach with a chain that they would uh, cut into my face and cut through various bones to get to this tooth and pull it down with a chain. Both, uh, you know, um, orthodontists that we saw said that, you know, there was a high chance, like a 50% chance that this uh, wouldn't work and I'd have to have a fake tooth. Um, they said they could just rip it out and give me a fake tooth anyway, but um, of course I'd much rather a uh, natural uh, tooth than a fake one. I went to see John, I wore this brace for the first year, it expanded my mouth, um, I had to have a tooth, a baby tooth ripped out here, um, that was completely painless. Um, and this tooth that was impacted up here that they said they could only get to through cutting through my face through, through bone it just came down very nicely and into position. So after the tooth was back in place uh, there were still um, various parts of my uh, mouth that weren't correct um, for example my posture and such. Um, talking to John uh, he introduced me to mewing and through the process of mewing you know my um, facial features became much better looking, um, my teeth uh, aligned after this uh, treatment which he had expanded. Um, they're not perfect but they are much better than what they would have been um, and um, yeah, they're much better. Um, I'm just so grateful to John really because um, it was purely by chance that I mentioned it to him. I just happened to be taking Daisy, Stan's younger sister, to see John. Um, it was either the same day or a day later um, when we would had some advice about Stan. And, and to be honest with Stan, I really thought that um, he would never need any treatment. Um, from what I could tell, he had perfectly straight teeth. I never thought he'd ever need a brace. So it was quite a shock when we went to the dentist and they said that he had this, this tooth that had just never come down and instead had grown sort of across the top of the roof of his mouth. Um, obviously as, as Stan mentioned we went to see um, a couple of different orthodontists and they explained this whole procedure with the, the chain um, and it was quite a shocking thing to think of, um, you know they were going to have to cut into the roof of his mouth. Um, for me he was 13, he was just starting a new school. Um, they were talking about train tracks, which he'd still have to be wearing when he was 17. I just thought, oh, it's such a long time. It's such a precarious, to me, it sounded like a precarious um, process. Um, and when John talked about his more natural treatment, where it was just a case of widening the mouth and the tooth naturally dropping down, I just thought I would be mad not to give that a shot. Um, and thankfully we did, because all it entailed was Stan wearing the brace for a year while he was at school. Um, that wasn't too much of a problem. Right. Loads of kids have braces these days, as we all know. And you couldn't even see it. Nobody even knew yeah. I had a brace um, until I told them. Yeah. Um, 
And then after that, it was simply wearing the brace at night, which of course is no problem at all. Um, nobody sees it, doesn't affect anything. Um, I couldn't have hoped for the treatment to have worked any better. Um, I'm just so pleased um, we went down that route. And, and I guess it, I just think it's really important that everyone knows that there is this option because I had no idea that this was available um, and it's just worked so, so well. I was originally trained as an orthognathic surgeon and during my surgical career removed many canines and also um, attached chains to many others. Um, it is quite a major operation. You have to remove ooh, a couple cubic centimetres of bone from the palate merely just to get at the edge of the um, canine to stick an attachment to it. And then of course there's all the palaver of pulling on the chain and putting full train tracks on all the teeth to stabilise them while you're doing this. And um, since I developed orthotropics, I've realised that basically it's correct posture which will ensure that the growth is correct. And um, I just know what the alternative would have been for um, Stan here. Um, and he, of course, never actually experienced it. Uh, well, yes, um, he, Stan came here today really for a checkup. And we've said to him that provided he can maintain his correct posture, remember posture is everything, tongue to palate, lips together, teeth touching just enough. And um, if he can do that, his face will continue to grow forward. And um, Julie didn't mention it, but there has been a really good looking change to his face. Turn around sideways for example. You can see how the whole of his jaw and cheeks have grown forward. I can tell you, certainly if you look at the original pictures, they weren't like that. And um, that is the, the main, I think, advantage of correct growth. Not only did the teeth come in the right place, but the shape of the face is as it should be. Um, yes, definitely. Um, everything John says. Um, I mean, obviously it's hard for me because I wouldn't know what Stan's face would look like now anyway. Everyone obviously changes and grows, but I have to say, I've been really, really pleased with um, how the features seem to lift and um, a lot define. Of people yeah, have said to me like I have um, when I was this way, I had quite a lot of flab and stuff around here and quite chubby cheeks. <laughs> now I have um, people say I've got good uh, cheekbones. You know, I've got a nice jawline and everything. Yeah. Um, obviously, my life shaved and such, but you know, yeah, it's, exactly. it's very um, win-win. It looks good, and people have noticed that, and I'm very pleased that people have noticed that. Yeah. And also, perhaps, I think I just wanted to say that um, John is possibly one of the nicest, most genuine, <laughs> honest people I've ever met. And he's absolutely passionate about this. And I think it's, it's only fair that his voice is heard because it, this really has been his life and his life's work. And it, yeah, he's, he's been amazing.